Hello there, my name is Nathan Gould, and in today's video, I want to take you through some of the options that we have within the LazyNet connector for grouping and sorting the data that we have in our queries. So the first question is, why do we need to do that? Um, and the answer is that in modern ERP systems, there's just such a breadth of data, just such a huge amount of information that it can be hard to see the wood for the trees. So we've built in a number of tools which allow us to manipulate the data in a way which makes it more useful to us. So that's tools for, for sorting and separating the data in the file, and also for excluding data that we don't want to see at all. And then we've also got some tools for manipulating that data to show it in a way which is more useful. So to begin with, we're going to look at the two main options that we have within the LazyNet query, and that is sorting the data. So for example, by ascending or descending, and then grouping the data. So splitting it out into different files based on some criteria that we've defined. Then we can also define a default range. So say, only show me data which matches a certain piece of criteria and don't bother showing me anything else. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. We do also have some other tools that we'll look at in another video, which is that we have other ways of excluding data from the query. So other ranges we can define, and that is in the dialogue and also in the report structure. And then we'll look at the other tools that we talked about with our group by query. So that's allowing us to group data of the same type and count it um, and is really useful for things like catalogs or production lists and things like that. So we'll look at those in a different video. But today we're just going to look at what we have available to us in our LazyNet query. So let's go into finance and operations. And you can see I have one query that I've created here called cost list, which is just going to give us a list of customers. So if I go into setup and query wizard, then next, next again, we can see I've got one data source and just a couple of fields so that I can populate my report. So then if I go to setup and run report, click OK. I can see that I get a report out, which is a list of the customers in this legal entity. And at the moment, it's ordered by customer account. But actually, it could be that the important information in here for me is the customer group. So I actually want to order it by customer group. So I'm going to go back into my query wizard and go next, next again. I'm going to come down to my sort fields here. I'm going to select my cost group. I'm going to send this over here. I'm going to sort that in an ascending order. And if I click finish and go to setup and run report again, click OK. Now when my report shows, I can see that it's actually ordered based on my customer group. So the customer group is ascending rather than the account number now. So that's the first option that we've got is just to sort the data in a way which makes it more useful for us. Sometimes though, it's useful not just to sort the data, but to split it out into different parts. So we're gonna come back into our query wizard. I'm gonna go next. And again, I'm gonna go all the way down to my group data in file. And I'm actually gonna create a file for each one of my customer groups. But I'm gonna decide that in that file, which is split by customer groups, Actually, the important thing for me is that I want to sort, not by the customer group this time, but by the account number. So we can use both of these tools at the same time. We can split the data out into different chunks, but we can also organize those chunks that we split it out into. So if I click finish now, and then I run my report again, and click OK, now I should get four different outputs. So one, two, three, four, for my four different customer groups. So here's my first file, all customer group 10. And this time I'm sorted on my account number again. And then if I click on next, customer group 100, only one in here, next again. And I can see for customer group 30, the number of records again, sorted in ascending order, next again. And here's my 90 where there's just one. So they're the first two options that we've got where we can use the tools in the query wizard 
to sort our data and to split our data and to do both at the same time. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to say, OK, actually, I don't want to do that. I only want to see the data for customer group 10. I'm not worried about anything else. So I'm going to go back into my setup and query wizard, then next and next again. And I'm going to come down to my sort. I'm going to remove this. And then we're going to come down to my range. And I'm going to say cost group. Select that, send it over. And when I select it, I can see that I have this value here. So I'm going to say my value is 10. Or I can use my drop down here to select it. Then I'm going to go to my group data and files. I'm going to remove that. So all we have is the range that we define. So we only want to see the data for customer group 10. Click on finish. And then again, set up and run report. Click OK. And now you can see there's only one file this time, but it's just my one for customer group 10. So that's the basic tools that we have available to us within the LazyNet connector for manipulating the data in our LazyNet query. We can use a range, we can use a sort, or we can split it out into different files. And we can do all different combinations of those things as well.